Hello, my name is Natalia Amesqua, and I thank to the organizers for the invitation to participate in this forum in honor of our colleague Victor Lapson of the USGS. In the name of the Mexican Geological Survey, I'm pleased of presenting this talk, which pretends to share with you an overview on critical minerals in Mexico. For those who are not familiar with us, we are taking the opportunity to briefly introduce you to our institution and its role in advancing on the knowledge of critical raw materials and other topics. Very generally, I will talk to you about the geology of Mexico and its mining potential, the concept of criticality and critical minerals in Mexico, and finally, on the opportunities and further work. The Mexican Geological Survey is an entity of the Ministry of Economy and as such a federal institution with more than 75 years of history, aiming to generate earth sciences information to contribute in the development and sustainable use of our natural resources. To achieve the goal, all around the country we have several offices and our structure comprises departments such as geology and geological mapping, geochemistry, geophysics, geohydrology, environmental geology, geological risks and hazards, remote sensing, mineral resources prospecting, assessment and evaluation, a research and development division, an institutional data bank called GeoInfoMex that serves in an online platform data, and two laboratories strategically located, one in the north and the other in the south, marked in the map to the right with the blue pins that provide internal and external analytical services, among others. The geological information is basic and essential requirement in the recognition of mineral commodities. In the case of Mexico, and specifically our continental territory, it comprises nearly 2 million square kilometers with a diverse geological history and richness of natural resources in a complex terrain, but with the advantage of strategic location with access to two oceans. The geological diversity is the result of all the geodynamic processes registered in the rock record. As seen in the map, the Mexican territory is composed of a variety of igneous, metamorphic and sedimentary rocks, some as old as the Precambrian of Proterozoic age. Covering a large part of the territory exist volcanic provinces, some with present-day active volcanoes, as those in the Cenozoic Transmexican Volcanic Belt province, result of active margin tectonics of plate subduction along the trench, seen in dark blue color in the margin of the Pacific side at central South Mexico. A large area of the western margin of the country crops out abundant magmatic rocks while the eastern side is abundant in sedimentary rocks. The Gulf of Mexico region, a passive margin since the Jurassic, hosts most of the hydrocarbon basins and resources. Overall, this geological richness has provided us of a variety of mineral resources, some of which will be commented, commented in the following slides. The Mexican Geological Survey has already mapped the country at 1 to 250,000, 1 to 500,000 and 2 million scales, like the map you see in this slide. Additionally, we have a progress of 48% mapping at 1 to 50,000 scale. Therefore, although most evident mineral deposits have already been recognized, there is still potential for new discoveries. Mining has been a very important part of the economic, political, social and cultural history of our country. In the larger map at the left, we see the location of main mining operations and type of substances extracted. Specifically, and because it is an important strategic mineral for the Mexican economy, I drive your attention to silver. Mines producing silver are represented here with a grey circle. Silver deposits have several typologies, but overall are associated with epithermal veins and replacement deposits or scarns. According to data of the mining chamber, in 2019 about 187 million ounces of silver were produced, and there is a reason why. 
In the map at the top right, we have a schematic representations of regional metallogenic provinces. We observe in several colors some of the main types of minerals and mineral associations. And you can see how silver and other metallic commodities have a lot of potential for prospecting. Currently, there is an effort in the generation of metallogenic maps, which will be fundamental for critical mineral research. Thanks to the geological and mining potential and the activities of the mining sector, based on 2020 data of the National Mining Chamber, Mexico is among the top 10 world producers of 17 different minerals. It's the first global producer of silver, the second of fluoride, and the main producer of celestine, molybdenum, bismuth, magnesium sulfate, zinc, barite, copper, gold, and other minerals. As a result, the mining metallurgical sector contributes with 2.4% of the national gross domestic product. As a definition used in this forum, critical minerals are natural resources essential to the economic and national security of nations and have potential to become scarce because of geological, political or technical factors. They are mineral commodities that have important uses and few effective substitutes. Their criticality status might vary through time and this could be because of new metallurgical or technological innovation is affecting their demand or because there is a need of a different material. Some critical minerals are produced as a byproduct of another commodity, and some are unevenly distributed worldwide or occur in sensitive regions under sensitive situations. If supply is interrupted, it could cause a negative impact in some economies. Although Mexico is a mining country, exploration, exploitation, and exploitation have been restricted mainly to the minerals we have been referring in the previous slides, such as gold, silver, lead, copper, mercury, fluoride, barite, salt, iron, and some more. Recently, or intermittently, cobalt and titanium have been produced. As a result, our country imports all the minerals it needs. The following maps on critical minerals are just an initial reference and represent the sites of current mining operations and prospective localities where these minerals have been reported. Assessment on criticality, based on statistical calculations of indicators such as supply risk, production growth, and market dynamics, have not been carried out yet. Considering the critical minerals already enlisted by other geological survey organizations, in Mexico, we identify mines of antimony, barite, bismuth, cobalt, fluoride, graphite, and tellurium. Their location in this map is indicated with a specific icon and color. It is important to notice that our country is already playing an important role in producing critical minerals. For example, it's the second place world producer of fluoride, providing 17%, and the fifth of bismuth, with 2.1%. An important mineral for rechargeable batteries and super alloys is cobalt, and its deposits in continental Mexico are scarce. The most outstanding deposit is El Boleo in the Baja California Peninsula. It's indicated in the map with a purple circle. In the Boleo mine, reserves are about 660 million tons, with a grade of 0.1% cobalt and 0.9% copper. Graphite is a major component of lithium cobalt oxide batteries and, for its properties, it is also suitable for other important industrial applications. Producing deposits occur in the northwest, here indicated with the yellow icons. Mexico occupies the 11th place as a world graphite producer, contributing with 0.8%, which is exported mainly to the United States. What about critical mineral prospects and potential? Several prospects of about 14 minerals, which present risk in supply for other nations, are prospected in Mexico. This map shows an example of them and their locations. In the case of lithium, used for batteries, ceramics, glass applications, air treatment or medical purposes, 
The market and consumption in Mexico is yet very small, but worldwide it has a promising future. Here there are deposits of lithium in clays, brines and rock. With the exception of the Bacanora deposit in Sonora, northwest Mexico, the other known deposits in our country are mainly of low grades. They have been insufficiently explored and their metallurgical recovery may be a difficult and expensive process. Rare earth elements are used in electronics, magnets, communication, batteries or medical technology. Several anomalies of interest have been reported, reported from carbonatite, cyanide and gabbro and other intrusive and extrusive cenozoic rocks of the eastern alkaline province, which is considered an extension of the Transpecos Texas volcanic field. Additionally, pegmatite related rare earth elements are hosted in rocks of metamorphic complexes in southeastern Mexico. Some of early Mesoproterozoic is composed of mid-crustal arc-related gneisses of poorly resolved ages, intruded by undeformed Cenozoic calcalkaline plutons. As we see in this map, there is still a lot of work to do to advance in the research of these minerals and looking for the potential of undiscovered deposits of interest. Critical energy minerals are a special case. National policies relating to uranium specifies that the exploration, exploitation and the benefit of radioactive minerals are the exclusive domain of the government of Mexico. Consequently, Exploration activities are exclusively delegated to the Mexican Geological Survey. The icons in the map show localities of uranium prospects. Exploration is very modest and currently the government has invested in the re-evaluation of previously identified resources hosted in volcanic and sedimentary deposits. Therefore, the exploration and assessment work continue at the moment through drilling programs. Although uranium and other radioactive minerals consumption in Mexico is low, since we have a nuclear plant, power plant and needs for medical applications, all the enriched uranium we use is imported. The generation of electrical energy by radioactive minerals is essential for our development. Currently, Laguna Verde, our nuclear power plant, only produces 5% of the electric energy in the country. Why critical minerals are needed? Well, there are several reasons and some of them are due to national, regional and global trends that foresight the need of raw materials for developing strategic sectors and technological innovations. In this figure, we see the intricate relations among materials, their criticality status, and some of the main technologies that require them, and the application sectors. Some of these strategic sectors are in the field of low carbon energy sources and transportation, as well as defense and space technologies. Since these sectors are strategic and critical, the supply risk for some economies who require these materials is an opportunity to drive the exploration of the nation's critical resources potential. This is an interesting representation of the proportions of critical mineral supply from several countries to the European Union. As mentioned in previous slides, we are already sourcing and contributing to the production of critical minerals. In the image, we observe the percentage of sourcing of our and other countries with respect to the global supply of the European Union. You can see some interesting cases. For Mexico, having access to areas of our own exclusive economic zone and international waters, both in the Pacific and the Atlantic Ocean, facilitates trading and maritime transport of mineral commodities in this case to Europe. So, supply and trading are important 
not only in critical assessments, but also in other economic aspects. Having a strategic geographic position is also an advantage for accessing diverse markets. Raw materials are important. Looking and thinking into a national and global perspective, let's take a look to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals of the 2030 Agenda and note how dif in different ways mineral resources are involved to achieve their implementation. Therefore, nations with mining potential have a role to play. Also, the mining industry has roles, responsibilities and opportunities across the 17 goals. Mining, as any other activity of the extractive sector, have positive and some negative impacts that can be diminished with industry best practices. Mining contributes to social and economic benefits, helping build infrastructure with innovation and industrialization through responsible consumption and production. It also provides materials which are critical for renewable technologies, important for the 17 goals. There is an opportunity for companies to collaborate transparently across a sustainable supply chain, minimizing waste and maximizing reusing and recycling. To end my presentation, I would like to finish with some final remarks. Materials are considered critical depending largely on the country priorities and objectives. Unifying criteria for critical mineral science and collaboration is definitely essential. Mexico is already supplying to the global market at least eight critical minerals and have geologic potential for the prospection of other minerals. Further work in Mexico implies improving expertise, advancing in the research, classification and assessment of commodities considered as critical to the Mexican economy. Finally, in our role as Mexican Geological Survey, we are strengthening our efforts to advance in the research of this type of minerals and we will formalize the Institutional Project on Critical Mineral Research 2022-2024 as part of our research and development activities. With this slide, I end my presentation. I hope I was able to share with you this overview on critical minerals in Mexico. I thank you all for your attention and also thank the contributions from our general director, colleagues of the research and development and geological operation directions at the Mexican Geological Survey. Additional information of our institution can be found in this website, www.sgm.gov.mx. I'll be very happy to answer your questions when we get to that part of the forum. Gracias.